I want to welcome you to Association Chat Podcast, Jan Louie, woo, yay. <laughs> hey, Kiki, thanks so much for having me, and big thanks to Big Red M for hosting oh, this. For the people who are out there listening right now, who are still very much on the fence, and they have been thinking about this and considering it for quite a while. By the way, I know some people like this who um, they've been straddling, like straddling making this decision for years, plural. Um, what kind of advice or encouragement would you give them uh, to help them to make that decision? What would a you lot. tell them? So, so first off, I would say, imagine yourself 20 to 30 years in the future, looking back on this time. Mm -hmm. And if you knew that taking that leap would make you successful, how would you feel? Right. And then if you looked at this time and you took the leap and you weren't successful, how would you feel? And it's probably not binary, right? Like nobody's yeah. going to just completely fail it's kind of more ambiguous. You're going to do okay. You might not just do as well, but taking, I think people would often say, if I didn't take that leap, I would regret it. So that's the first thing. I think there's a lot of regret in not doing it. Mm -hmm. The second thing, and I'm not trying to promote myself is I worked with coaches throughout the process. I worked with one coach to figure out, okay, I wanted to go into coaching. What's the best way to do it. And then I worked with another who really helped me think through the fear mm -hmm. and the, the practicality of, okay, what does it look like? But also this mindset of if I make that leap, what are the good things that could come from it? And so I think part of it is a mindset and walking with that fear. Mm -hmm. And then I think the third is just talking to your partner and your family and saying, how can we make this work? Yeah. Because this is yeah. something I really want to try. Yeah, I, th I, I like all of that. I think um, those discussions are so super important to have. The regret question. I mean, would I regret this? Would I regret not taking this chance or making this move down the line? I know for me, that's that's been a pretty powerful motivator where, um, you know, I thought, this is such an interesting opportunity. I, I may not be successful, but I just kind of have to do this just because I'm so curious to see what's going to happen and, and what I'm going to learn along the way. And I actually, I will say that most of the collaborations that I've had have had that element where it's kind of like, um, you know, there's seasons for relationships and it's like, there's seasons for all kinds of relationships, including the professional ones where it's like, I worked with this group and it's like, it's not the right fit forever, but I learned so much from the time that I was there and what I was doing. And that's okay too. Sometimes part of the answer is, is understanding that, you know, there can be more than one transition that you're going through in order, you know, along your journey that you're not just it's not just clear cut all the time, exactly how these things play out. So, Absolutely. and I see, I see someone that says, amen to coaching, put the oxygen mask on yourself before attempting to help other passengers. Absolutely. I was actually going to ask about this because, um, you know, the obvious next question might be, how do I even find the right kind of coach? How do I know you, you talked about having coaches, um, yeah, I, I think that there are a lot of questions about how do I, how do I sort of go out there, find out who some good coaches are? Is it okay to like talk to them first and figure out if there's a good fit? And, you know, what is that, what's the ideal sort of situation to make that relationship to find the right pairing? Absolutely. I would love to answer that. But first I'm going to just go back to your last question around the regret piece. I also think there's a false sense of security that people have in their current jobs. Mm. They think their jobs are so secure that it's much more secure than taking their side hustle to become their main hustle. 
but it might not be as secure as they think, especially now with um, people losing jobs, especially at senior levels. So it's not as secure as you think. And that false sense of security might be preventing you from taking that leap. So I just want to mention that. Yeah. Um, going back to the question about coaching. So I really encourage people to talk to at least three coaches. Um, I'm an ASAE vetted coach. So ASAE has a bunch of vetted coaches. So you can go on to their ASAE headquarters and um, the career headquarters and find different coaches and talk to them. And I do think there's coaches for different things. I, you know, for example, you might want to have a coach who's coming in to deal with team issues and um, making the team more cohesive. That could be a very different type of person than the person who's going to help you with taking a leap. So mm -hmm. think about the, So I really needed two different types of coaches. Um, now, they both could have helped me, but I also think it's nice changing it up and hearing different perspectives. Uh, let's see. I think also comparing their methodologies and their prices and mm -hmm. how they work with you. I would also say you definitely want a coach who is ICF certified. There are a lot of coaches out there and some are legit and some are not as legit, unfortunately. So definitely look for somebody with that ICF certification. Yeah, I've heard that before. And, um, you know, I think that that's really great advice. I, I want to mention thanks to all the people who have been listening and commenting along the way. Um, Cecilia was saying great insight. She has to go to her next meeting. Lisa DiCarlo. Oh, this woman so talented. She, um, she says, thank you for the insightful conversation. I would love to talk to at least to find out like what, what she's got going on is multi, uh, multi-talented in so many different ways. Um, and, and we have Justin who says, I agree with your assessment regarding false sense of security. Yeah. Full-time W-2 positions are not secure. Their benefit comes from a steady predictable income while you have the position, but they are not a guarantee of employment. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that was something that I saw um, Cecilia say earlier, no job is secure, but we fool ourselves with the regular mm -hmm. paycheck. That can be something that I think a lot of people are sort of, um, it, it is locking them into that position of I'm, I'm going to stay here because it's more secure than going out on my own. When I have to say, having the ability to um, be agile and adapt and um, you sort of control a number of different aspects in your life, that freedom you were talking about before, um, that's that also has a great amount of benefit as well. So absolutely. And you open up freedom to learn. Freedom so to learn. It, yeah. You know, when you're working full time, you often need to upskill in the area that is related to your work, mm -hmm. which is fine. But you sometimes get stagnant in your learning. And so when you're on your own, you can learn anything and about anything. And it's so exciting. And I think that's really important, taking into account the new technologies and anything to make your work more seamless is super important when you're on your own. Mm -hmm. um, and I know for me, like an area that I'm always looking at is AI and the influence of AI on coaching. Uh, but I'm very lucky to be part of that conversation for better up. So all this to say, I just think it opens up so much freedom and you can put a time limit on it too. Like for example, you can say, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna try it out for two years or three years. And then if it doesn't work out, I can go back to a regular job. Yep, absolutely. Like I gotta say, I mean, I, I knew that when we were gonna have this conversation, that we were going to have a good time, that it was going to be interesting. Um, but I actually, I really think that it was hopefully even more helpful than, than just interesting, because I do think that there are a lot of questions about this particular topic that people are endlessly interested in it just because, um, there is so much uncertainty around us. There are so many people who have many different areas in which they can pursue 
their careers and change change their lives. You can have multiple careers throughout your lifetime and be wildly successful in all of them, right? And so um, when is it the right time? Just because you started out in real estate doesn't mean you can't change to associations, doesn't mean you can't change into being a coach. There's all kinds of ways that you can engage with your life and um, to provide a service to other people. And so that's wonderful to talk to you about all of this. Um, I do want to put up here, if, if people are watching this live, or even if you're watching this later, um, on fastcompany.com, if you go, you can search under Jennifer Louie, you look under her name. Um, I put the link up here and I'll put the link uh, below uh, after the, the live uh, has at live stream has ended, but you can actually see all of her articles that are posted there. Um, if you want to go back and like read, cause Jen, you've written about a lot of different topics. And so that's a great place to go and kind of catch up on some of that writing. And then if you want to follow Jen, um, this is her LinkedIn. So connect with her, follow her, see what's going on, find out maybe about coaching, um, and some of the different ways that, uh, Jen interacts with the world and definitely check out designyournextstep.com. So um, wonderful time. Great people who are listening in and saying uh, excellent topic, great discussion, many great insights. Jen, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Got to have you back. We got to talk about more about this stuff. There were so many different ways we could have gone down so many different paths with this. All right. Thank well, you so, so much. much. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't this great? I mean, I had such a blast talking with Jen. I'm so thankful that she you know, joined me on association chat. These great ideas that go into being brave and jumping out and, or maybe not, maybe staying, maybe it's you're staying where you are and exploring your side hustle on the side for a while before you decide to, to take that leap. But the point is, is that you think about it, that you think through it and maybe get some good help to help you to suss out what makes sense along the way.